Hello, what's happening? William Johnson here. In this episode, I'm going to go over a rhythm that is inspired by a popular and iconic, really, song of the 1980s, and that is none other than Smooth Operator by the band Shaw Day. We often think of the artist Shaw Day, but it's actually the whole band. So, anyway, Shaw Day is one of my uh, for sake of communication. It's one of my favorite singers and one of my favorite bands, especially of that era. But man, the music is just, it's timeless. It's just, it's great, man. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to go over a this rhythm, the an inspired version of the original recording, which was by Martin Ditcham out of London. He recorded on the original recording track of the album Diamond Life. Later on, Carl Vanden Bosch also recorded with Sade and has played live with her. And I've, su I've seen a couple different uh, variations of, of this in concert, um, how they play and different players play it differently. I I'm going to use a style that I hear on the original recording, or at least a version, my, my take on it. So, and uh, this isn't going to be note for note. I'm going to play it a moderate a moderate tempo and and then I'm going to break it down note for note what I'm playing and then again it's not note for note on what's on the actual recording however it's pretty close to it and the style is there also uh, in the description below I'm going to place a couple links to some live versions of of Martin playing and Mr. Bosch, uh, Carl Bosch playing also. So you get a couple different versions. One which, which is a little closer to the actual tumbao, which at its core, its foundation, this rhythm is. But you'll see different how they play it a little differently. So anyhow, I'm going to put a link to those different videos down below in the description. All right, now let me let me play this at a moderate tempo and then to give you a couple of my thoughts on the actual rhythm and the style of playing and yeah, all that stuff. So anyways, the the rhythm goes like this. All right, now, basically what's happening here is a mod, in my opinion, okay, my, my take on it is a modified tumbao. So that's what we're playing here is a modified tumbao. Now, I'm gonna play uh, a version of a tumbao and show you the differences. Now, the thing is, when I say modified is it's played differently than in a traditional marcha sense, right? Afro-Cuban, salsa, mambo sense. But also, we're not laying into the heel toe and the core, the, the main issue also is that I'm not just sticking to the clave, the Afro-Cuban clave. All right, now Martin Ditchum does an amazing job on the original recording. And I, I love this this version of, of the tumbao that he's playing. And I say version of tumbao because really when you when you hear a tumbao, what we're playing here is really not that much different. But it is a little bit different. Now, one of the main things is this second note and where it plays with the backbeat on with the snare uh, that the drummer is playing. Now, I, I, a while back I was recording a video with my uncle and we were going over this cover uh, by Marcos Vice, so nice. Some of you may have seen it on the channel. I'll put a link there as well in the description so you can go back and listen to it. But as we were recording, I was engineering my uncle and Ma the drummer, Mark St. Clair. I, I noticed that it really reminded me of Sade's Smooth Operator. So I pulled out the LP. I have Diamond Life on vinyl and I pulled it out and listened to it and instantly I knew why it reminded me of the track and the main reason is and I had either forgotten or just didn't know that the the rhythm the groove between the drummer and the percussion is really the drum what the drum set was doing was actually a samba it was a, a bossa nova really contemporary uh, uh, pop version of a samba that doom, doom, 
or bossa nova really so it, it, it kind of was a pop version of this is a fusion of that so that the, the bass the kick drum and that's just driving throughout the groove throughout the song right and and which it has its foundation traditional foundation in the samba okay so then the congas are playing now well the snare is playing in the beginning of the song a side sticking on on the snare right in the rim four one two three four so we're in four four all right um but right before that martin is playing this open tone cut so his slap is landing right where that snare also lands so it's doom dap doom doom bop da boom boom and i i like to think of it of a light subdued tumbao where it's not just he's not just laying right into that but so the tone of the the the, sl the slap and these tones playing in melodies is really bringing that essence to uh to uh bringing that essence bringing a nice essence to the song all right so let me break it down what's happening i could i could talk about and philosophize about the rhythm and the differences between and all that other stuff i can go into it i can really nerd out on it but let's let's break down what i'm going to play and then in the future in the next few episodes i might actually play some variations because there's a lot of improvisation and in variations that are going with the groove so let's get into it and break it down note for note what i'm actually playing here when i play this rhythm inspired by smooth operator all right the first note is going to be a touch on one which is going to be different than a straight tumba where we're going to come right down with the palm and the whole hand we're just going to come forward and play almost like a ghost note okay that's the first note the second note we're going to take the same hand and we're going to rock back and play a an open note so forward back so first note second note all right the second note or the third note is going to be an open slap so one two three now if you're still working on that open slap okay then you can do this now mr carl van den bosch also played that style with sade on tour with her so hey if he does it and the boss says it's all good or whoever the boss of the band is i don't know i just i see sade and i'm like you know i would be like whatever if Sade's cool with it we're good with it but if mr boss plays it then that works too but this version is a little different so we're playing an open slap and one of the reasons why is when you go back and listen to the original recording too you can hear that that slap has a lot of tone into it boom boom bop boom boom bop boom 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 bop listen to the intro listen to the beginning listen to the pop of that that the slap of the the quinto the or the or if it's a conga it's tuned up it's cranked pretty high and that there's a lot of tone You hear that? That tone even better than the other ones. I was playing very inconsistently there. Whatever. It is what it is. There we go. Opening right up. Letting it down. So. Okay. So you want that slap to really ring out and be open. Tone is the name of the game with this groove and with this style. All right. So we go one, two, three three all right okay the third after that so that's three the fourth note the fifth note and the sixth note are all going to be touches on the left hand so we go one two three four five six all right so one two three four five six and then we're going to play the seventh and the eighth note on the lower drum hands together nice 
thick open tone okay that's the first part of the groove so now we're in four four think of this as a two bar phrase just like the tune bow all right so the first the first bar of four beats one two three four one two three four okay one two three four then we play another bar of four but it's slightly different and it goes like this we start off the same touch open slap but right after the slap we're now going to move to two open notes on the conga then we're going to move to two touches left right okay and then the last note and open on the higher drum again touch open slap okay then we're gonna play open open touch touch open all right so we have one two three four five six seven eight and the second bar is complete and now the whole rhythm is complete if you put them together it's like this one two three one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight i'll play it over a few times so you can get the idea the concept of it these two rhythms being one a, a variation coming together All right now in context and I'm also gonna play this with the track okay I made a track with the the drums and then I'm gonna play it together but what does this sound like in context uh, I, if we were playing in the song it's played a little bit differently but you can get the idea there the concept okay now it's very important to play that second note now coming back to a little bit of music theory a little bit of counting so that we can get the feel correct is that this is an eighth note rhythm notice I counted eight notes together but we're in 4-4 four, four. We're playing all these different notes but it's an eighth note meaning one and two and three and four and one and or one and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay as opposed to the funk conga lessons where we were playing a 16th note groove when we're pushing those 16th notes one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a pepperoni pepperoni one and two and three and four and you see the difference between those two Short, these are longer notes and it brings a whole different feel now these styles are I like to say related they're like cousins we have a we have the pioneering of neo soul and some soul and jazz roots here uh, with the pop uh, uh, sound of Sade but really it's it's soul still this is soulful music and it's like a it's like a cousin it's like a relative of the funk man they, they come from the same places right so we can play different feels of that 16th note groove different pieces of the funk within this and have some really cool feels but before i jump into that remember we we really hinge off of that second note that that eighth note and of one before the second beat so one and before the slap this open note before the slap boom 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 
And I really love the way that Martin Ditchum's, um, is it Ditchum? Martin Ditchum, I think it is. I'm saying his name correctly. Please forgive me, sir. If I'm not, uh, I would love to meet Sir Martin one day. I think that all of the amazing playing that he's done is just, it's, it's, it's influential for me. The Le Nubian st uh, stuff that he did, uh, the Sade uh, recordings, a lot of that has had a lot of influence on me as a player playing in these different styles. So it's really important to, to make sure that you're to play that upbeat with that downbeat coming on the the accent there with the slap all right now let me add this and then we're going to cap this off with me playing with the track and end it and then maybe we'll play different variations because there's a lot of improvisation with this later in another video a really cool fill is to add a 16th note fill on between beats three and beats four very important there between beats three and beats four one two three four okay um, you hear that when you hear uh, Sade saying da 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 no need to ask he's a no need to ask and you hear that da 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 listen to the song you know what I'm talking about you hear little bits of that throughout the song open notes and little fills with the congas between beats three and four it's it's a theme that happens in different parts of the song so it's really cool to to apply some of this in this style now i'm not just breaking down it note for note i'm just i'm just uh gleaning some information from this from this song from this track so you have the and one very important and then also if you want to add some spice you have the and of three between beat three and four but we're going to do a 16th note all right, so it's gonna sound like this. We're gonna play on three E and uh. All right, so one, two, we're gonna play 16th notes on three E and uh. One, two, three E and uh. Slow it down. One, two, three E and uh. Okay, and then go back into the groove. Four, boom. One, two, three, four. This is why learning to count if you're still new to this is so helpful and beneficial all right so we play the groove and add this little fill one two three four one two three four one two three and four one two three four one two three and four one two three four one two three and four you see that i'm adding combining the 16th notes with this eighth note groove now let me add the combination with this fill So it's really cool to be able to have that that uh, skill, develop that skill of counting, and apply it there. So, anyways, that was a, I think I thought that would be a pretty cool little thing to add in there. And you can there's a lot of improvisation, but understanding where those those little fills and those little things, those little uh, not melodies, those um, motifs, uh, if if you will, are happening throughout the song really helped us to to spice it up and to keep some type of authentication, authenticity, authentication, authenticity to the feel of this style. So if I were to just improvise and then add some of these fills between beat three and four, it might sound like this. So this was really fun doing this. I'm going to play a little bit to the track and then you can kind of take this, these notes, 
that we were going over and just see how it applies in this song. This was really fun doing this. If you enjoyed it, if it helps, if you were able to glean any information, please let me know. I would love to hear from you in the comments below. God bless you all. Heaven smile upon you. And I'll see you soon.